Hey, what's up everybody? This is Muth24, and today I'm going to take a look at the last two of the trade collections of the Venom comics, uh, which are Toxin with a Vengeance and The Land Where Killers Dwell. And following up on the uh, last two volumes that I talked about, uh, these are something of a continuation of the Savage Six storyline, uh, but mainly a brand new storyline that sort of refocuses on Flash Thompson, you know, who he is, what he stands about, uh, instead of the more action-packed, uh, large-scale fights that he was in in the previous volumes, this is more about him sort of coming into his own as, as more of a superhero that's identified as being one of, one of the rest of them. You know, he's, he's sort of recognized by, uh, groups of the Avengers as being someone they can count on, someone they can trust to sort of take care of things, uh, on their behalf. So, looking at the uh, size of these two, you can kind of notice that, uh, based on the spine of each, the land where the killers dwell is the much more significant one in terms of uh, the number of issues that it collects. And I think that also reflects the uh, importance of the story in that one. Toxin with a Vengeance is still good, uh, but it's pretty much the like last closing of the book on the previous storylines. Uh, from the preceding issues, and obviously with Toxin being on the cover there, you can guess that it's pretty much Venom versus Toxin uh, being the main point that they're covering here. And Toxin was sort of teased at the end of the last uh, collection with Eddie Brock taking on that symbiote and wanting to go after Venom. So that's a lot of what we have here is sort of a, a revisit of the symbiotes, how they interact with one another, uh, where Eddie Brock's at mentally, and sort of Flash Thompson uh, trying to balance a more normal life in Philadelphia with his superhero antics. He actually takes on the uh, job of a high school PE teacher, and the way that he kind of talks about it, it's, it's a very therapeutic thing for him to you know finally have uh, something that he's doing that's it's got more purpose um, because as, as much as what he was doing with uh, Agent Venom uh, before this was still important to sort of the bigger picture, uh, not just as the superhero thing, but you know for his country and for uh, keeping people safe and all that. He now has something that's a little bit more personal, uh, something that he can see value in, uh, not just for himself but for a younger generation, and uh, the way that we see him sort of talk about that, I think, uh, says a lot about how he's sort of matured throughout this whole process of taking on the Venom symbiote and becoming a, a major character in, in the Marvel Universe. The art style in this one is a little bit different than the previous volumes. They've kind of changed it up just enough to make it interesting each time, but not done any drastic changes. Um, this one kind of follows that same pattern where, you know, you have some some exaggerated uh, bits where Venom's going, you know, all crazy with the symbiote look there, but nothing that's too out of the ordinary. Um, have some sort of more uh, sketch style uh, art direction with the, the hair there on, on Flash and uh, some of the environment backgrounds and all that, like the gym here. Uh, but it still looks very nice. I, I like the direction of the art style. I think it works for this issue and the story it's, it's telling. But at the end of the day, uh, Toxin with a Vengeance, the story that it's, the particular story that it's weaving, um, you can kind of see coming from a mile away. It's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just a little bit more single-minded in its focus than most of the other Venom issues. The Land Where Killers Dwell, on the other hand, is both a closing chapter for the, the main Venom storyline here before we got into the Thunderbolts and uh, eventually Guardians of the Galaxy and other stuff that Venom was going to uh, participate in, but it's also sort of a opening of, of, of new potential storylines. Uh, I don't know that some of the stuff they end up covering at the end here uh, comes to any sort of fruition in later Marvel storylines. It's sort of just, oh, we can do more with this if we want to. Uh, they cover a little bit of the Damien Hellstrom uh, bargain that he made with Venom again, but it's not anything that's 
super huge to this. It's just sort of like a, oh, we'll, we'll keep this somewhat open-ended for future storylines. Uh, but for the most part, that was already covered in uh, the previous volumes. Again, we have a little bit different art style than the last volume. This goes back to the more classic uh, art style that we had in the earlier volumes of Venom. Um, sort of the, the house style that Marvel's adopted for the past five years or so. Uh, we have some wacky things going on. I won't spoil, like, all of it. Uh, but we do have, because he's chasing down some guys and wants to catch him by surprise, we have the symbiote take over a car and we have the Venomobile for about five seconds. And that's kind of fun and just something different uh, to do. Uh, we do see some sort of ragtag superhero supervillains uh, in the area of Philadelphia that Venom kind of has to deal with, and it's nice to see them on a smaller scale. Like, it's not necessarily Venom going up against these huge, iconic supervillains uh, for the sake of, oh, well, we have to put them in here because it's, you know, it's what we feel obligated to do. Uh, no, it's it's smaller smaller class villains that Venom's dealing with, but I think the ramifications of what happens uh, resonate on a much more personal level with this character and with the readers um, because they take the time to make all these characters worth caring about. Uh, and that's that's pretty pretty good for, for not just as a superhero story, but, but the storytelling in general. Like I'd rather they limit the number of characters and make each one someone that's that's interesting to read about than throw too many characters on the screen at a time. Um, we do have Flash sort of take on this uh, teacher role other than his new job uh, in the angle that there's a another uh, symbiote-bearing character in this storyline, and she's younger, and Flash has to kind of keep her under control and also make sure that she doesn't, you know, get too far and over her head with this whole crime-fighting thing. Uh, but it does make for some really cool uh, combos with the two of them fighting against uh, all these goons and whatnot because you have two people with symbiote powers uh, swinging around Philadelphia now. Uh, there's not a whole lot else I can talk about uh, without getting too much into the sort of spoilerish territory of, of this, but we do have a couple major villains show up later in the story, um, not so much as antagonists to Venom and uh, his new partner in crime here, but uh, they are important to the, the larger story and the story that's been going on for probably about 25 issues now. Um, but I think it's a fitting ending for the Venom storyline. It's, it's nice to know that there's more that they do after this with the Thunderbolts and Guardians of the Galaxy and that sort of thing, um, but... I think this works as a good ending point for the series. There's a lot more they could have done, and I would have liked to have seen this go on for longer, uh, but I do think it, it, it's it's a good place to, to cut things off uh, where we get to in, at, by the end of this volume. And, uh, you know, 42 issues for uh, a series that's as uh, big of a gamble as having Venom as a hero and it being uh, the symbiote being attached to a new Spider-Man universe character, uh, I think is... Is, is really impressive for, for this series, and I'm, I'm glad that it got as far as it did uh, before they moved on to other things with Flash Thompson. Um, so, as far as the series as a whole goes, uh, I've said it before in the previous things, I can't recommend this enough. Uh, it's one of my favorite Marvel storylines uh, that I've read in a long while, and probably one of the best things to come out of the Spider-Man side of the Marvel comics in like the past ten years, if we're being completely honest, because a lot of the Spider-Man stories... Uh, have not been great. Um, but yeah, I just, I really enjoyed this. It's a very dark and a little bit more mature uh, themed storyline, but if you're interested in seeing uh, some of that, it's, it's definitely a great, great option. And so with that, I will see you guys next time.